Hi everyone, let's take a look at exercise 16-5, which asks us to produce a statement of cash flow using the direct method. Um, we have some information relating to the Kansas company uh, that we will need to use to prepare the complete statement of cash flows using the direct method. Okay, now I've staged some of the problem uh, in the lower half of the screen and we'll have to scroll a bit so you can see all of the problem. But let's begin looking at the data. Um, we'll look to the left of the mouse here and start dropping in the number numbers where they need to go. So we have cash and equivalents, equivalent balance at the beginning of the year. Okay, why don't I scroll down because I've staged that already. Uh, that beginning balance at the beginning of the year is $25,000. We know at the end of the year it's 70000 so we can drop that in the right place. Now, from that alone, we can already compute what the net increase in cash has to be, right? It would be the 70 less the 25000 or 45000 But let's work through that as we get to it. Okay, the third line says we received cash as interest. Um, so why don't we drop that down? And that would be cash received as interest. So under the direct method, I would call this receipts of interest. And we'll drop that down as uh, $2,500. OK. Next, we have cash paid for salaries, $72,500. And this is all cash flow from operating activities. Um, Why don't we do our receipts up top and our payments down below? So, payments for salaries, 72500 I'll enter that as a negative. Then we have to look at the bonds payable retired by issuing common stock. Okay. Let's think about that. We had bonds payable that were retired by issuing issuing common stock and there was no gain or loss on that. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that there's it's a non-cash item and we need to put that in the notes to the financials. So why don't we uh, why don't we write that down below? What we would have is something like note number and we don't know what the number would be and we would indicate that we have a non-cash investing financing activities. Okay, now, I would typically do it like this. Note number, and I'll just use X. And I'd put a period right there. And we would, ha we would have a note, in this case, of uh, first note being that we had we issued common stock to retire 187,500 dollars of bonds payable okay so that's how we would note that um, I would probably format this something like that okay and that X is going to be replaced with whatever note it would be in the financial statements. Okay, I went a little bit fast here. There you can see it at the bottom of the statement. Okay, so now moving down, we've taken care of the 187500 Let's look at that 125000 appearing to the left of uh, where I'm moving my mouse there. Cash paid to retire long-term notes payable of 125000 Well, that's a cash flow from a financing activity. So, using the direct method, we would say Payment to retire, long-term notes payable, and uh, that dollar amount is $125,000. Now we also re received cash from the sale of equipment of $61,250. Well, that represents an investing activity since we're dealing with property, plant, and equipment. So we would indicate a receipt from the sale of equipment. It's uh, sixty-one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, right? Okay, we had twenty-five thousand of cash received in exchange for a six-month note payable. Well, since we're talking about notes payable, that's a financing activity. 
we would say receipt from borrowing um, borrowing on a six month six month note note payable that's fine and that borrowings is a positive number right we received cash forward of twenty five thousand dollars then there is the long land purchase by issuing a long term note payable and again no cash changes hands so we've got another uh, footnote to put in here and what we'll say here is that we purchased um, what do we purchase land in this case yeah purchased land financed with a also would be added to the non-cash investing and financing activities. Now we're up to the $23,750 of cash paid for the store equipment. Again, cash paid for the store equipment um, would be an investing activity. So we need to write down payment for the store equipment. You see, all we're doing is trying to classify where these where these uh, cash inflows and outflows occurred. And it's a negative because it was cash going out. All right. Cash dividends paid 15,000. That sure sounds like a financing activity to me. And uh, we need to show that $15,000 going out. Okay. Cash paid for other expenses is from operation. Right, so we would just say uh, payment payments for other expenses. It's not uncommon to have a category called other, as long as that dollar amount doesn't get too large. Doesn't it won't raise a lot of questions. Um, cash received from customers. Now, you know, I'm going to put that in here. Um, receipts from customers. But since the dollar amount of that is so large, which is 485000 why don't we move some of these? I'll, I'll use a cop, cut and paste rather than a, rather than a move. Okay, and then I'll cut and paste that one so we've got that in the right order. Um, and we have one last item, which is the cash paid for merchandise. So we would say payments for merchandise. My formatting is going to be off because I did a cut and paste rather than a copy. OK, now we've gone through all the items. So now all we have to do is put in the subtotals. Here we enter the net cash provided by operating activities. sum right here. Maybe put an underline on that. And that's our net cash from operating activities. Slide on down a little bit. We need to compute net cash. It's going to be provided since the number will be positive by investing activities. Right? Underline that. Put our sum in here.
prove that number by adding the net cash provided by operating and add to that cell the 37,000. I'll slide and add the last cell there, which is a negative, and we get the 45,000. So sure enough, 45 plus 25 should equal 70, which it does. So we can underline this, put this in a nice, uh, a nice accounting format, let's say. I'll change the format here to uh, double accounting underline, and that will look fairly nice. And um, we've worked through this problem. So let me look up top so you can watch it again from top to bottom. We've computed the cash flow, the net cash provided by operating activities, then the cash provided by investing activities, by financing activities, and uh, we've accounted for all the change in cash for the year of 2005, and we've added a note down below to deal with the non-cash investing and financing activities.